Hey, this week I'm putting the spoilers right up top. Vader. Just Vader. That's my review. G'day! Welcome to the Nerdy Dad channel. I want to talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi Part 3. As with all the other episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, this episode was directed by Deborah Chow. Hey, I was talking to a colleague early today, and I was saying that if they show Vader at all in this episode, it's going to be an end tag like it was last week. Well, I was wrong. In the same conversation, he was saying that if Kenobi met Vader in their, their current state, Vader would absolutely wipe the floor with him. He was right. It's just that neither of us thought that was actually going to happen. Look, I've got some nitpicks here and there with this episode, but it doesn't matter. My first and overriding impression when we saw Vader on Mapuzo was, holy shit, they're doing it. Yep, they're doing it. And then he just starts killing people left and right to draw Kenobi out, and it was absolutely glorious. He defeats Kenobi. He starts torturing Kenobi. Hands down, Kenobi should be dead. He's done. When Vader turned up at the start, I was thinking, okay, this is unexpected, but he's just directing the Inquisitors. He's going to be hands off until part four or five, but nope. I started getting shivers about the time when Obi-Wan began to sense him. No way. He's on the planet. How's Obi-Wan going to manage to avoid him? Nope, he doesn't. I was absolutely blown away. Now, for one of the nitpicks. For the story to continue and for Kenobi to be where we know he where he winds up, he had to be rescued. But I'm not sure that the help that he got should have been sufficient. One lady with a pistol and a droid. That's Vader. The flames shouldn't have stopped him. A minute before he put out admittedly smaller flames with the force, but look, in the end, who cares? If that's what they needed for the plot, fine. We got Vader wrecking shop for about 10 minutes before that. And since we're talking about the end of the episode, Reva ends up with Leia. Damn. I mean, I know it's hard to feel concerned about her safety because it's a prequel and we know exactly where she's going to wind up back on Alderaan, but still, I was on the edge of my seat anyway. The immediate, immediate danger had passed for Obi-Wan, but how does Leia end up getting out of this? Look, they finished it on an absolute cliffhanger. Believe it or not, there was a first half to the episode. I should talk about how there was a Jedi slash Force-sensitive underground railroad. I could talk about how cool Vader's castle looks. Likewise for the Fortress Inquisitorious, or how Obi-Wan fixing Leia's droid helped them to bond. It's also probably important to the story that Obi-Wan is still trying and failing to contact Qui-Gon. I mean, it's also obvious that Obi-Wan was far from centred. I could talk about all of that and more, but this is my review and coming out of the episode, my reaction was first half of the episode. There was a first half of the episode. Kenobi has been defeated. He's hit his low point. Next week, the job of rebuilding himself begins. Look, that said, my first and last word on the episode are the same. Vader. This is the Nerdy Dad, signing off.